Hello everyone, welcome to my Book of Shadows tour slash grimoire. I, for the life of me, can't remember which is which. I know they're both slightly different, but I just call mine both <laughs> Book of Shadows and Grimoire. And I've been binge watching on YouTube recently so many tours of other people's Books of Shadows and Grimoires and art journals and you name it and I just wanted to contribute by adding yet another video to the ever-growing list of videos that are out there. So, this, this is my baby because it's my first ever book of shadows that I made and it's been a while since I opened this. <laughs> I probably should have looked ahead in it like in advance but I didn't we're just gonna have to roll with it and see what happens if there's anything private in here I'll I'll skip it or take it out or whatever but we should be fine I don't think there's anything in here that I don't want people to see I'm very open with my books like a lot of people keep them secret I think it's it's the traditional way is to keep them secretive and more personal for you and your craft but for me it's just really it's an excuse to just get creative and to make pretty things because I like making pretty things and I wanted to share it with you all yeah so let's dive in huh, what should we start with the fact that I ruined it with this butterfly sticker maybe <laughs> I love butterflies so yeah I found a sticker and I stuck it on and I wish I never did because it's, it's, ugh. anyway. This book is a Tree of Life book and it's lovely. I absolutely adore it. I've totally forgotten where I actually got it from. I bet it was just off Amazon or something. But it's a fantastic looking journal-y book and I just fell in love with it immediately. So much so, I didn't even want to start because I'm one of those people who I can't begin books when they're so nice. <laughs> anyway, I've got some little pendant dangly things hanging off the side. I've got the, um, is it pentagram or pentacle when it's got the circle around it? I think it's pentacle. Yeah, pentacle. Got a pentacle. And then I have a little owl pendant that my friends got me because owls are a really big thing with me and then I've got this super old antique I'm not actually sure what it is it's not a pocket watch I know that much let me sit down for a second because <laughs> I'm staring at my camera to make sure I've got it in the in the frame but I have I can sit down now it's fine right this it's like an antique, I think you call them, uh, what are they called, snuff boxes? I think they're called snuff boxes. Uh, Google it. <laughs> and then on the inside of it, if I can open it, I think I put something in here. <clears throat> I hope it's not herbs or it's going to go everywhere. Come on. Come on now. I was hoping to do this in one take. Don't do this to me. Aha, there it is. There it is. What have I done? It's an eye. <laughs> it's a picture of an eye. Because I like the uh, all-seeing eye. And I like the uh, protection of the eye symbol. And Is it Eye of Nazar? Is that the correct term for it? I've got one on my finger as a ring. It's supposed to protect uh, from negative uh, judgments that are put upon you. It's kind of a re return to sender kind of deal. It's like if so, I've put that in there so that if anybody looks at this book or what I've done in, with any bad intentions or negative judgment, then it gets reflected right back at them. 
Yeah, I think it is one of those snuff box things because I think you used to put something in there. But I just like it because it's old. I really like old things like antiques and stuff like that. So I've got those hanging off the side of that. And then I have a little tag. And here, as you can see, I've called it Book of Shadows. It might be a grimoire, but I called it Book of Shadows back then. And then I have a peg with a piece of wood. And I think that's a reindeer, but I just like stags in general, stag imagery. Owls and stags are like my spirit animals and my spirit guides. And I always call upon those two animals to help me get through. And butterflies actually are also used quite a lot in my witchcraft stuff. Right, now to the main event, I guess. Oh yeah, I've got a pheasant feather just shoved in there for no reason. Just to make it look pretty. Little pheasant feather, I have a huge collection of pheasant feathers. I'll put that to the side. Yeah, now the main event. So as I said before, starting books, I hate starting them. I, to, I, can't, I can't stand it, I hate it. The first page, I never know what to do. So I decided, and actually while looking at other people's books of shadows, I think they've done the same thing too. We've all had the same idea, which is to begin our page, our first page with the full card, the full card of the tarot. I do like tarot and I do read tarot. So I thought it was just a kind of cool first page to just have a, to just have this depiction of like starting the journey. We're starting the journey of, of going through this book. And at the time I was literally starting my entire witchcraft journey and my new spiritual path that I was heading towards. And it says new beginnings on the top. And if I just backtrack a little bit, I've got a few things that don't really fit in here that I've just put into the peg, just for safekeeping. I might put these in the uh, in my like main one that I've got going at the moment, but for now they stay here. So, what are we looking at? The Pegasus constellation. Why did I make this? It's very pretty. Oh, I remember. I remember why I made this. Yeah, because there's uh, you can uh, buy a star for people. Uh, it's a thing you can buy. So I was gifted a star in the sky uh, named after me, which is Alexandra. Alexandra Baker. That's me. And I did some research about where it was exactly and I discovered it was in the constellation of Pegasus and I was very happy with that so I did a little bit of research about wh what exactly Pegasus is all about and then I kind of wrote down the, the location of where it was and that's it right there. That's me! I'm a star in the sky! So yeah, just did a bit of research on Pegasus. What else have we got? Ah, uh, song lyrics. Yeah, I do love, I do love a good song lyric. So one of my all time favorite groups is Sleeping At Last and their song Saturn is just my all time favorite song ever made. So of course I had to have a quote for it. With shortness of breath, I'll explain the infinite, how rare and beautiful it truly is that we exist. And then Saturn is actually my ruling planet anyway. I'm a Capricorn, so yeah, hard times for me. <laughs> Always hard times for me. Uh, but yeah, Saturn, my ruling planet. And then this is another song by Sleeping At Last which is eight. They have like a, a whole album of like numbers. And I really like, like everybody 
identifies as like a number based on their like life path numbers and things like that and I believe my life path number is six which is a really lovely song I've got that in my current book of shadows and then I think eight was something else and I've forgotten what that was six was my life path and eight is something about possibly some was it like future either the future or my purpose or something like that so I wrote the lyrics of that song number eight down I won't read it all but uh, that song is again one of my favorite songs ever ever made Oh, this is private. This is private. This is yeah, that's private. No, we're not. We're not doing that. <laughs> I can tell you what it is, though. It's actually a love letter to myself, and I highly recommend it. Actually, it was actually my therapist who uh, came up with that idea. Basically, write yourself a love letter so that when you're going through a hard time or you feel well, you just feel doubt and anxiety or a depression. Uh, write a letter to your depressed self from your non-depressed self. I suffer with a chronic illness and a disability. It's uh, myalgic encephalomyelitis. Try saying that three times faster. Uh, so a lot of this actually I've made because of my disability. So a lot of things mean a, mean a lot to me because of my disability. And writing a love letter to myself to kind of talk to myself from when I'm in a better day compared to a bad day. It's a good exercise. I would, I, I highly recommend trying it. Anyway, moving on, I will be here all day. Saturn, good old Saturn. So I've got like the, the lyrics are on that side and then all of the information is on this side. It's basically everything you need to know about the planet Saturn. All the correspondences from the day, the metal, the colour, the herbs, the crystals, everything. Influences, all the words that go alongside it. That's a really cool page, actually. I really like that. <laughs> oh, looking back is fun, actually. Looking back at my baby witch creations. Right, what else have we got? Oh, we have an actual main page. I must have decided to actually make a main page. I mean, the good thing about this book is it's a binder thing. It's so I can take pages out when I want to and add in pages when I want to. So I'd recommend for starter, for starter journals, definitely get one of these that you can take pages out and in. Because if you do like a, a proper book that you can't remove pages, that's so much worse when you make a mistake. Trust me, I know. I know from experience. Anyway, this is a book blessing, I think. What does it say? Water, air, fire and earth, cleanse and bless my book and hearth. Drive away all fear and harm and absorb any tear for only good may enter here. That is cool. I like that. I think that's an image that I found off Pinterest. Lots of imagery I get from Pinterest. Probably that was too, that symbol. Oh, and I remember this. This is um, Witch Alphabet, and that's just my name in Witch Alphabet. And then I've got a title page. It looks like the Book of Shadows. And I stained everything with coffee as well <laughs> to make things look aged. I stained everything with coffee, so it's all a bit like crumbled up and a bit like... But it's fine. I like it. I think it's cool triple moon symbol, another pentacle, same thing again. And I'm starting off strong with the Wiccan Reed. In its entirety by the looks of it. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Yeah, and ye harm none, do what ye will. Like, I'm not Wiccan personally, I'm not a Wiccan, I'm just a witch. Uh, you don't have to be Wiccan to be a witch and you don't have to be a witch to be Wiccan. 
uh, but I do like the Wiccan read. It's just, it's just a very pretty, pretty thing. And it's just like, I love the, and ye harm none, do what ye will. I like the rule of that, that as long as you don't harm anybody, you can do whatever you want. And that's how I always go about my practice. Oh, these pages are so cool. I remember these. I've got the wheel of the year. No book of shadows is complete without the wheel of the year. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I love that, actually. I'm now getting jealous of my older self because my newer book is actually not as pretty as this, actually come to think of it. I have to up my game now from my old self. So yeah, Wheel of the Year. So these are all the different sabbats that go on throughout the year. My favourite one is obviously Samhain. Halloween, you know, that time of year. <laughs> and then here is my wand. So I, I handmade my own wand. It was a DIY project. Um, and this is just a journal entry about how I went about making it. And I just happened to make it on Friday the 13th. Huh. I, I didn't realize it was Friday the 13th, okay? But I, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's fine, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure there's no problem about making it on Friday the 13th. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it has pendants all hanging off it, the stag and the owl and the tree of life, a snake, all the different things. And I've got all the symbols that I love all written on, on, a, on it. And then I've got an like earth symbol because I'm an earth sign. Got my name written on it. Yeah, my little DIY project. <clears throat> and then here, Aha, this is for pendulums. I currently own two pendulums and these are my pendulum boards, but I actually didn't, I, I mean, I did use them at first, but I don't use them anymore. I just do freehand yes or no swinging either way. <clears throat> Sorry, let me get a drink. I'm not used to talking for this length of time. Let me get a drink. <clears throat> yeah, so this was a tile, a piece of tile wallpaper, and I just thought it really looked like a pendulum board. So I turned it into one, and the results are very cool. Just your standard yes, no, maybe, unclear, ask again. On this side, we've got familiars. Because back then I was very into the whole idea of familiars. So I've got a nice little owl here, some flowers. My, my typography was really good back then. <laughs> yeah, my typography is pretty decent. I should really up my game with my current Book of Shadows. <clears throat> Another pendulum board on this side. This is more like topics, so family, love, self, work, travel, yeah, all that stuff. Here's my spirit guide. I did a page about my spirit guide who came to me through many, 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 many hours of meditation. And they showed up as an owl. It might be because I love owls, but I, yeah, they, they came to me in a meditation many times in the form of an owl. Either an owl or a humanoid figure, but just like pure white light is how I see them. Like no details, they're either an owl or a silhouette of a human whenever I meditate. So I've got a nice little invocation about an owl and then some actual information that I got about my spirit guide via meditation and tarot and various divination techniques. So Azar is the name that came to me many times 
because I tried to get a name out of them. <laughs> and the, 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 the name that came up was Azar. I don't know if it's meant to be pronounced Azar or Azar, but I just say Azar. And then I, out of curiosity, I looked it up on Google, whether it's an actual name or not. And it is actually a name, a real name. And it translates to help in Hebrew and to shine or glow in Persian. So that was a cool coincidence. To help shine and glow is how I took that. So kind of the perfect name for a spirit guide. Communication methods, uh, clairsentience, intuition, tarot, pendulum, meditation, my inner voice, synchronicities. Yeah. I love my spirit guide. This is a journal entry about when I believe I met my spirit guide in person. Because, uh, long story short, I was feeling, for lack of better words, mm, I, I, was, I was not in a good place. I was severely ill. I was kind of wanting to unalive myself, for lack of better words. I was in the garden late at night and I was crying. I was having a really bad time. Uh, but then out of nowhere, this gigantic owl just landed right in front of me. And we had the longest stare down in the history of ever. <laughs> we, I just stared into its eyes and it stared into my eyes and it was so crazy. And then eventually it flew off again, but I... I genuinely think that was my spirit guide showing up to say, hey, hey, oi, you, carry on, don't stop, carry on. So of course I made a journal entry about it. And then I made a little collage of my spirit guide as well. Using a picture that uh, we have in the house and we've always had this in the house. Um, it's actually in my bedroom right now I, because they were going to get rid of it and I was like, you are not getting rid of this picture. I'm keeping this picture because this is my spirit guide. I see them more as a barn owl than any other owl. So yeah, I used again loads of like spare wallpaper cut-offs that I had and collages, drew my own symbols on it. I love that page. That's lovely. Let me check that I'm still actually recording because knowing my luck. I oh, know we are still recording. We're good. We're good. We're still recording because knowing my luck, I would have gone up there and it'll have just stopped recording and then I'd have been like, had to do it all over again. Anyway, uh, still going on about animal spirit guides. I was well obsessed back in the day with animal spirit guides. I had a collection of super old stamps that somebody left behind, like a friend of the family. Well, actually, was it a family member? I can't remember. Somebody in the family, very, very, very old, long gone. They left behind so many stamps. So I shuffled through them and I found the ones with animals on. So again, I've got snakes, stags, butterflies, like the main ones. And then oddly enough, flamingo came through a few times. And back in my childhood, I, I was actually obsessed with the flamingos. So makes sense, I guess. So bit of information about what all the different animals mean. So snakes meaning healing opportunities, change, transitions. And then just going on and on about the animals. Bay leaves. Bay leaf magic, yeah. Because I use, yeah, I use bay leaf in almost every spell that I do. They're just so useful. <laughs> They're so handy. Because um, you can like, I like writing on bay leaves. Like actually writing sigils or symbols or my name or things like that. Yeah, and they're good for banishing, protection, uh, healing, wisdom. Yeah, loads of good properties from bay leaves. 
so they deserved to have their own page. Candle magic, yeah, because I'm chronically ill and disabled, I won't go on about that too much, but because I'm disabled it means I have very little energy to do magic spells and things like that. So I have to do low energy magic. <laughs> Everything I do has to be very low energy because uh, I simply don't have the physical or mental capabilities to do really intricate um, or really long magic. So candles are so perfect because literally pick a colour, any colour, and then you're off. Just light a candle with a certain colour of your choice. You can carve things into the candle, you can put oils on it, and then you're kind of good to go. And it's like I don't have to hang around either, I can just let a candle burn. Nice and simple. So that's my page on candle magic. Uh, this is my page on Mother Shipton because I live in the town where one of the most famous witches and prophetesses live, uh, which is Knaresborough in North Yorkshire, England. Uh, so she's kind of my, my idol. <laughs> she's my idol, Mother Shipton. So that's my little picture of Mother Shipton and then it flips over and here's an image of Mother Shipton and it says near this petrifying well I first drew breath as records tell and I have some of that well water now because you can actually go and buy some of that water and it's meant to have very good healing powers so of course I had to have it and then here is all the information about Mother Shipton all her backstory and the folklore behind her and yeah I love Mother Shipton, she's so cool. Happiness blooms from within. And then hidden behind this. Ah, it's my all-time favourite poem, which I actually don't know who wrote it. I don't know who wrote it, but it's my all-time favourite poem. <laughs> uh, why is it my favourite poem? It's because if you read it from top line down, it's very, very negative, very self-critical, just very nasty. But then if you read it from the bottom upwards to the top, it's very positive and positive self-talk. So it's actually such a clever poem. It's super clever, so that's why it's my favourite, because it's like, not only is it clever, but it also demonstrates how, how negative thinking can be turned around. Just a little reminder to myself that, yeah, that, you know, stop those negative spirals, please. Thanks, brain. So yeah, just hidden under that my nice little poem. Now you're probably already wondering, <laughs> you're probably already wondering, is that the tower card? Has she really gone and devoted a page to the tower card? The worst card in the whole tarot deck? Uh, yes I have, yes I have. I won't lie, I have. Uh, it's actually one of my favourite cards. <laughs> even though it's the card you don't really want to get ever. But the reason that I love it so much is because I think of this card as when disaster strikes, when your building, your tower crumbles, the only place to go is up again. And you've got to get all the bricks back together and slowly build that tower right back up again. And I think that's kind of a, a cool way of looking at the tower card. Whenever it comes out for me or someone else, I always phrase it in that way, where it's, it's like some kind of disaster is going to happen, something bad is going to happen, but it's actually just a, a learning experience that you can rebuild from. 
And then there's this very lovely short poem um, by Nikki Rowe, I believe it's pronounced. And it says, the real heroes are those who rebuild their lives using adversity as a stepping stone to greatness in the midst of the chaos life has thrown at them. And I just think that embodies the, ta the tower card just perfectly. So then on the back of it, information about what the tower card actually does mean. Yeah. Just a bit of info about the tower card there on the back. Athena! Yeah, I love Athena. Now, I don't do deity stuff. Um, I actually don't worship any gods or goddesses or any deities of any kind. But if I did, it would be Athena, uh, like 100% Athena. I am such an Athena person. Like she's the goddess of like creativity. Um, she's the goddess of wisdom and war strategy, things like that. And she has her own special spirit guide that's an owl, just like me. <laughs> So yes, I've got a page all about Athena and all about all the different correspondences again. The planets, the animals, the places, the symbols. And then a little bit about how Athena came to be. I do love Athena very much. This is a painting that I did, a silhouette of a witch lady. And then I think this is an actual song, sheet music to, oh yeah, it is Saturn, Saturn again, Saturn's back by sleeping at last, Saturn's back. In shortness of breath, you explain the infinite. So that's actual sheet music to my favorite song. Then on this page, we've got the 13 goals of a witch because I was just starting, so I did like to have rules and things like that in my book. And I really like this particular one. I think this one is, I think this one is really cool. Know yourself, know your craft, always learn and grow, apply your knowledge, achieve balance, be kind to yourself and others, keep your thoughts in good order, celebrate life, attune yourself with the earth, take care of your needs, exercise your body and mind, meditate and honour your deities. I can't think of any other rules that are any better than that, to be honest. And people say witchcraft's all bad and evil. And yet this is, <laughs> this is the kind of thing we're doing every day. Palmistry. Yeah, way back when I was really interested in palmistry. Um, I was actually going to properly study it and everything. Uh, but in present day, I actually lost interest in palmistry. But back then I was very into it. So I photocopied my own hand. <laughs> photocopied my own hand and then drew on all the different lines that were very prominent on my hand and then I labelled all of the different lines and what they mean and then all of the different symbols and then this is very cool it reminds me of Marauder's Map from Harry Potter the way that this the, the way I made this like pamphlet it's like a little pamphlet so it like opens up yeah like this look it goes like that look at that I was so creative <laughs> I was so creative back in the day uh, so yeah I went through basically everything and I just listed off all the different things and what they mean how to read somebody else's palm, how to read your own palm. I don't think I continued it. I didn't do that side. I think there's a little bit in this side. Yeah, it just keeps going. Look, this line means that, this line means that, this line means that. 
And then I think I started reading. Look at this! Look at this! Look at that! That is so Marauder's Map. I, I bet that's why I did that. I bet that was my inspiration when I made this. All the different signs and symbols, the planets, all the elements. And then I started reading my own palm and I was supposed to write everything that my palm said in here and I didn't. I stopped. I don't know why I stopped. I just stopped. So I started to. Left hand dominant shows more creativity and intuition. I'm left handed, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I love that. I should really come back to this and like... I should, I should really come back to this and just carry on. It's a shame that I stopped with that pamphlet because it's really cool. Viking runes, the Elder Fuff, the Elder Fuff, the Elder Fuffark, 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 I can't, I can't remember how it's pronounced. The main ones, <laughs> the main ones that you see all the time. So I have, um, I have some obsidian rune stones and I don't use them anymore, but I used to. And so I listed every single one and then I went ahead and I listed all of them and then I put all of their meanings, the tarot card that they're associated with, the words and yeah, and what they mean. Then I move on to crystals. I now have a, a very extensive collection of crystals, much bigger than this, like 20, 30 times bigger than this. Uh, but back then I had a very small, lovely collection of crystals and I did a drawing of every single one of them and I wrote down what each one means. Look at that, it's literally just that. <laughs> I, I own about 60, 70, maybe 100 pages worth of this now, if I was to try and do that again. Yeah, Tiger's Eye, Lapis, Obsidian, Amethyst, Turquoise, all the stuff. And then I won't bore you with this, because really, this is kind of the end of the book. It's all the tarot, the major arcana side of the tarot. So I had this like magazine where you could like draw your own, uh, colour in your own tarot. So I used this to create all of these pages based on the major arcana tarots. This took me forever to do. I remember doing it, it took me forever. So yeah, each one I would do like a, a drawing of like the symbols behind them. I would put like the main meaning and then I'd write about each, just like all the details that you need. The tower! What are the odds? Hello tower. Yeah, so what the upright means and what the reversed means and then kind of the general history of what the tower actually is and what each one is. And I'd go silver, gold, silver, gold all throughout. Like that. And they're just all the same. And then I just absolutely drenched them in coffee. <laughs> just drenched them in coffee even though the paper's already old looking I was just like it's not old enough I need to make it look even more aged so I just did that with every single one and yeah so that's kind of like the end of that book just got one final random page which is sigils so my own handmade sigils that I made some healing ones, some family, friends, and some of my keywords like owls and Capricorn and just different symbols that I could use in my magic. And then at the very bottom here, a tiny little guide of how to actually make sigils that I found really useful at the time. And I think that's it. That is it.
we've reached the end. Look at the mess I've made. All of these were neat and tidy when I started. <laughs> but yeah, look at that. My first book of shadows, my baby book of shadows. And there's still plenty of room. I can still definitely add to it if I wanted. But I've been so focused recently on my brand new main one that I'm working on, which eventually I'll do a tour for that as well. But it's not quite at the stage where it's worth doing a tour of yet. So I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. I hope that seeing my book of shadows inspires other people to get creative with theirs and really you can do you know the best thing about witchcraft is there's no rules really you know the only rule that i abide by is you know don't if you just don't harm other people just don't do things with bad intentions and then do what you will and it's the same with your book of shadows, you know? It's just like, get creative with it and do whatever you wish to do. Like my current book of shadows is a lot more arty, so it's got a lot more art pages on it rather than like journal entries. And it's kind of like you don't need an order, you don't need to do chapters or, you know, like a contents page. I mean, you can if you want, but it, it does make things harder because there's so much information out there that you want to include. And these were just the main things at the time that I wanted to include. And yeah, it's been fun going through through my old book of shadows. It's actually been fun to look look back at the past and what I was into back then. Yeah. So I hope this has inspired you because that's what all the other tours from other people have done for me. They've inspired me to be creative with my own book. Yeah. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. And I hope to do more witchy content soon. Let's close this up. Yeah. Hopefully I'm still recording or I'm gonna be so mad. I've gotta put these things back in before I forget as well. Anyway, there it is. <laughs> Job done. I wish you all the very, very best and I will see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Bye bye now.